it going everyone, ASC Fitness here, back in Oxfordshire, see Oxford City here at the Vore Charging Stadium. We have Tomaldo who's just over there and Ravenelli will be joining us for his second appearance on Ground to Ground. Here nice and early, about three hours before the game, so early that when we turned up on the motorway we could see into ground and there was a youth game going on, so <laughs> tick two matches off in one day again. Having a circuit of the ground now, hopefully have a lot of fun here. I didn't know too much about this club until I read up on the history, but I know they've had a few decent cup runs and anything involving the FA Cup excites me. This looks like their coach. And there's Tom Aldo with a nice new jacket. Let's take a stroll around. Let's eat. There's the club bar. Uh, that's all. So we go, we've got some of the food, we've got some decent chips, well seasoned, nice and crispy. They're nice, about three quid. Sadly, no veggie burgers yet. They said they might have some later. Wonder what's sitting against Liverpool. And Tom's got his burger and chips. What do you think? It's good food to be fair. It's off the thin tone. Oh, they got their own nails as well. I won't be having any of them today, so I'm off the source for a bit. Can't go wrong with this stuff. Oxford City were founded in 1882, playing fixtures sporadically in their early years. But after winning the FA Amateur Cup in 1906, they joined the Isthman League. They struggled for a great deal of the 20th century and brought in legendary England captain Bobby Morris manager with Harry Redknapp as his assistant in 1979, at which point the club became a limited company. Moore, however, was unsuccessful, and Oxford City would even be evicted from their home in 1988. They would return to senior football in 1990 and move to Marsh Lane in 1993. They rose through the leagues in the 90s, reaching the FA Vars final in 1995. The 2000s saw them face both promotion and relegation, and in 2012, they were promoted to Conference North for the first time after defeating AFC Totten in the final. An incredible FA Cup run came to pass in the 17-18 campaign, as the club knocked out Football League Colchester in the first round and reached the first round again in the next campaign. They also defeated Banbury 4-3 to win the Oxfordshire Senior Cup in a thrilling final to retain the trophy, and they knocked out Football League opposition again in the FA Cup in Northampton. After a successful fifth place finish last season, they looked to move forward, building on a strong backbone of cup success. Overall, they have won one FA Amateur Cup, two Isthman Leagues, 33 Oxfordshire Senior Cups, two South Midland Leagues, and one South Midland League Premier Cup. And a bit of trivia, in the 1999-2000 campaign, Oxford were the first team to take an FA Cup tie to two replays since the limit on replays was enforced, as their initial replay against Wickham was abandoned after a fire alarm went off just before the penalty shootout. So those are our hosts, Oxford City. Let's have a look inside their home, Marsh Lane. So I'll go have a walk around the ground, it's a nice bit history and memorabilia. Let's take a stroll. So I quite like it so far. There's a lot of people who have turned up nice and early too. A lot of people that know each other in the club bar. There's a lot of kids in um, Oxford kits walking around because they've been playing a match this morning. So it seems like it's a club that really cares about um, getting that engagement with kids, getting them to play football, getting them to love the club. Because competing with Oxford United, who obviously our football league team must be tricky, but I didn't expect it to have like the um, support it has here. So fair play, they've they've done really well there. I think. What do you think so far, Tom? I was hoping for words, but the Vito Corleone face of approval will have to do. <laughs> you see all these cool stands. They've got a stand in every single bit of the ground. A lot of um, <clears throat> non-league clubs tend to maybe put one stand in one bit, leave a lot of it open, but they've very much balanced it out. Very good club bar, probably do a few more seats. They've got some dead weights here for no reason. Oh, I'm not lifting that. <laughs> Very nice. Hopefully soon, this will all be packed. Here's something I've not seen at any of the non-league clubs we've been to, a proper full-on LED screen. There we go, gone for for a pudding here, got a nice coffee and lemon drizzle cake. Very nice. And there's a little club shop. It's a nice pin badge, it's nice and nice and big. Four quid. So all that 
nicely to the collection. So, kickoffs rapidly approaching Ravenelli. I'm sure we'll arrive soon. I've just met uh, someone who watches my videos. His name's Tom. No, not that one. Someone else, which really means a lot to me. It's the third time I recognised in public safety finish. So that is a hat trick. I'm very happy. Right, so please welcome back Ravenelli. Hello. He's driven all the way from Coventry. How are you feeling about today? Excited. Excited, I'm, good I'm, man. I haven't been to a non-league game before. His first is his non-league debut. He's popping the non-league cherry. Yeah. Ravenelli, welcome to non-league. You're in for a treat. Oxford City take the lead 60 minutes in. It was a neat passing move that's been tucked in inside the box. They've been the better team. I felt if any team was going to make a break for it, it would be them. So we're not seeing a 0 0. Oxford City 1, Tom Bridge Angels 0. <laughs> 24 minutes in, and Oxford City doubled their leads. They had a corner, had everyone up. It was headed away, but if everyone's still forward, it's been looped into the box. And the number two, it's a wonderful looping header into the net. They double their lead. It could be a very good afternoon for the home side. 2 0. Don't mischeck Half time here. Oxford maintain their 2 0 lead going into half time. They've been dominant. They've been by far the better team. The 2 0 is a very precarious lead to hold on to half time. So maybe Tom Ridge Angels can get back into it. Plus, it stands, I think. If it keeps going the way it is, Oxford City will seal a comfortable win. Half time, 2 0. So, boys, half time, what are you thinking? Right. Good game. You enjoying your non league debut, Ravenelli? I am enjoying it. Have we converted yeah. you? Uh, we'll see. Oh. I've got other things to do with my time as well, but I'll, I'll come to a few. What do you think, Tonaldo? Hello. Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. You really need to throw me a bone sometimes I speak to you. You're like Erling Haaland to interview. That's my characterisation. I don't say anything. You just said something. Oh, sorry. Hi, everybody. Drink? Yes, sir. It's a pretty goldfish. Second half has only just begun in the sunshine. Oxford have neatly tucked it in at the end of a nice move to make it three. It's a bloody goal fest. Oxford City three, Tombridge Angels nil. Oxford City now have a penalty. It's a chance to make it four. This is becoming a whitewash. Can they make it four from the spot? Let's see. City make it four from the spot. There's plenty of time to go. This could be seven or eight. Can we break the AFC Finners record? Let's see. So full time and Oxford City do take three points in some style. Four goals, a hat trick from Nolos. Incredible performances from Alfie Potter on the right wing. You may remember him from having Waterlooville when ahead against Liverpool in the FA Cup all those years ago. And Zach McEachran in midfield. Josh McEachran's younger brother was absolutely superb, carved Tombridge Angels to shred. So a brilliant performance from Oxford City as they look to fight for promotion. Fair play to them, four goals. You can't complain. Ravenelli, have anything to say? Yeah, it was a good game. Good uh, first 10 minutes, Tombridge looked like they might have a chance, and then after that, they were just shite. He's correct. He's spitting. I don't, I don't know if you bleep your uh, blog. Oh, I don't. Apologies. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> you don't need to watch your fucking language. Wow. <laughs> that's just got me demonetized. <laughs> yeah. Raven Ellie, we've con our new non league friend. So, Aldo, any thoughts? <laughs> uh, he talks to England when the camera's not on, honestly. Right. So, full time, 4 0. Let us rate the experience. 
So we'll start things off as always with the welcome and I'll give their welcome an 8 out of 10. Every single member of staff and fan we spoke to was really positive and engaging. It's definitely a place that's set up for ground hoppers to enjoy. And when during the game, the bloke I was stood next to was telling me a lot about, you know, Zach McEachra and Alfie Potter and other players. So he could tell I was a ground hopper and was like really interested in telling me about like the team and the players and everything about them. So like I really appreciated that. So yeah, absolutely excellent. Excellent welcome. I thoroughly recommend going there. You'll be welcome to open arms. Very welcoming fan base and very chatty and engaging staff. So yeah, 8 out of 10 for welcome. In terms of food and drink, everything we had was good. I They were some excellent chips, very well done. Not just, you know, run of the mill like a lot of places. I think they put like a decent effort in with like the cake I had as well. Because whilst it wasn't made there, they'd obviously put effort into like getting like decent cakes. Not just like, again, run of the mill basic stuff. The criticism I would give them, it seems to be a common theme there wasn't a good array of veggie options there's a lot of places i go if i want something hot the only option i can get is chips and like, i do love chips but it's kind of like but what if i don't fancy chips that day well i don't have a choice just during the game they said there might be veggie burgers later i went there and there wasn't so i just had to have a mars bar it's not like ideal so i think i really should like look at expanding their veggie options just because you know tom and raven were able to get a burger whilst i just had to have chips and a mars bar but apart from that the food and drink was good so probably give it a 6.5. In terms of atmosphere, there were sort of hints of chanting from both sides, but I do feel like the amount of people that were there and staying they have, they could probably have had a bit of a better atmosphere, so I'll probably give it a 3.5. It was very positive and family friendly, but I just think in terms of like the atmosphere during the game, even though they're winning 4-0 at points, it did feel a little bit flat, given how well the performance was. You would think there'd be a bit more chanting. I give 3.5 for atmosphere. In terms of stadium, I'll give a 5. I think there's obviously a lot of thought put into the stadium. They've made sure that there's four different stands so you have a good variety of options where to sit. The fact that a non-league club had a screen of that size was really cool and like I was saying will help generate a lot of revenue for them to build in the future. They had a good variety of options so I think they definitely put a lot of thought into variety and made sure that anyone can sit anywhere and still enjoy the game. Value for money, I did think some of it was a little bit overpriced. It was like £3 for a blackcurrant and soda. I normally pay like £1.150 for that at clubs. And, you know, it was about four fifty for a coffee and cake. Like, they were all, like, fine. So it wasn't like, at least I was still paying over top for good things. But I think, considering, like, there weren't that many options for me to, like, pay a lot for the options that were there, I did feel like, yeah, slightly overpriced for that level. But at least the food that I did have was decent. And we did see, like, the day before the game, we bought our tickets long ago, but there was a deal where you could buy a ticket and get, like, a match day deal for 20 quid. So I think they've obviously put a lot of thought into making it a reasonable price for fans. But yeah, I think the prices could probably be a tiny bit cheaper just in terms of what they're providing. So I'd probably give the value for money a 6 out of 10. So that was Marsh Lane, home of Oxford City. Really nice grounds, really welcoming people. I've had a very pleasant experience. Good to see them get a convincing 4-0 win. I've been AFC Finners. Thank you all for watching. See you next time and stick with us as we go ground to ground. AFC Finners out.